everyone. I'm Dr. Kai Xinya, and I'm very honored to be here today. The topic that I would like to share with you is the future for rural healthcare in Myanmar. First, I would like to start with the word telemedicine. So, what is telemedicine? Telemedicine is the practice of medical care by using advanced technology to deliver care to a distant site. It means that telemedicine is a physician in one location can take care of the patient at a distant location by using telecommunication infrastructures. As we all know, to see your doctor in person, you need to take time off from the rest of your day. That means you need to take time off from your walk, and also you have to drive a long way to the hospital. And if you ever experienced moving around in Yangon, you will know that the traffic is horrible. Sometimes it may take at least an hour to one location to another location. And of course, um, even though you reach to the you reach to hospital, you still have to wait in the waiting room to see the doctor in person. The whole procedure is very time consuming. If compared to telemedicine, where the doctor can see the patients and perform all the procedure, such as checking his or her overall condition, asking the present illness, giving the diagnosis, prescribing the medicine, giving suggestions, and also refer to the other specialists, will all be done without meeting him or her in person. Although telemedicine is convenient. Based on my experience, trust me, for the majority of people in Myanmar, it is within their deep-rooted culture that they think it is necessary to see the doctor in person rather than on a screen. It is because they believe that how would a doctor know what is wrong with me if they didn't see me in person? Back in 2017, when I was working in a hospital in Bangkok, at that time we provide a service called teleconsultation for Myanmar a patient. But you know what surprised me was, the people in Myanmar still wanted to do a visa, book a flight, travel thousands of miles away. Staying up in a hotel, spending much more money, just to see their doctor in person. This is uh, that's why I think it would take a long time for Myanmar people to accept telemedicine. But you know, everything changed when COVID nineteen say hi. It was during the first wave of COVID nineteen. Um, most of the almost all the specialists. In the hospital in Myanmar, they saw their patient via video call. You know, this is the hospital guideline to re to reduce the risk of transmission of COVID nineteen. So this is the new adaptation that we have to make using telemedicine in our healthcare. I also did online medical consultation as a charity program. It is called Burmese Chinese Medical Charity. And all the consultation fees goes to the COVID fund. Most of my patients are from Gogan ethnic group, uh, because uh, those Gogan people, uh, they barely understand Burmese, so they need a doctor who can speak Gogan language. I gain a lot of patients from Gogan, where it is very far from Yangon, and all thanks to the telemedicine, so that we could communicate and I could see. Them and take care of their health. So here comes another question. So here comes another question. To what extent is telemedicine reliable? I must say telemedicine is of course reliable, because it allows doctor to see their patient face to face, even though it is through the screen. Let me give you one example here. Yesterday, one of my friend called me around eleven p.m. It sounded very urgent, and she requesting me to do a video call with her with her cousin who is currently living in another town. I accepted the call. 
um, her cousin it was crying, very panic, and showed me her three months old kid. The kids, the babies, the baby's eyes was full of discharge and can barely open. She told me that her kid was well before and just in that morning the kid will full of discharge and cannot open the eyes at all she was very worried and she said it is very difficult for her to go to the hospital at that at that time at that moment uh, because of the national curfew i came her down i look i take a close up look um, to the baby's eyes through the screen I checked the eyes and I noticed that there is no redness around the eyes, no swelling and no inflammation. I told her to take the home thermometer to check the baby's temperature. She did it and the baby's temperature was normal. I came her down, I explained to her it is very normal for the kid um, at this age to have the discharge like this because it is due to the lacrimal duct obstruction we call the lacrimal duct is the duct um, around here between the area between the nose and the inner corner of the eyes there's a lacrimal duct I tell her that it can be fixed just by simply massaging this area 10 seconds a time and 10 times in a day and I told her not to worry uh, just be noted that if there was any swelling any inflammation or any redness around the eyes you really need to go to the hospital and do a further more checkup this morning I received her call she told me that her baby is all better now and she expressed her gratitude towards me and it all thanks to telemedicine again. For most cases like this, checking patient condition and having effective communication with patient is enough for the doctor to determine the correct diagnosis and treating individual personally. And of course, sometimes we need to refer the patient to the corresponding specialist or to the tertiary hospital to have further more investigation. The rise of the telemedicine in Myanmar is a very good sign as it allowed us to take a big step forward in purchasing our vision, health equity in, for Myanmar people. Health equity is where every citizen have a fair chance and opportunity to be healthy. According to UNFPA, 30% of the Myanmar population is living in the urban area while the rest 70% are living in the rural area. What this means is those who live in rural area, they are lack of specialist, doc specialist doctor and infrastructure for their health. In some severe cases, the entire village, about 50 or 100 house houses, have only one single nurse to take care of their health. So, if they have some diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, or heart disease, they need to travel a long way to the big cities like Yangon or Mandalay for a better health care, which is very time consuming and costly. So, if we could set up the telemedicine in each village or in each clinic in the village or in each primary health care center in that village. The, the population in the village can access to the health care, to access to the specialist anytime, any place. As a third world country, one may wonder about how the villagers acquired technology required for telemedicine. However, a download of a simple face communicate application would do. And in this day and age, almost everyone have a phone. 
That's why we say that telemedicine is the future of healthcare, and telemedicine will revolutionize the whole healthcare system in Myanmar. Thank you for listening.